There is no hell, okay? We don't believe in hell. Hell is the name of a German goddess of death, I think, is where we actually get the word hell. Gehenna, the Hebrew word for the land of the dead, yes, we believe in that, but there's no hell. That's not a thing. It's not in the Bible. It's extra biblical. There is no hell. That's from the Cretes, okay? So throw that out. So it's the harvesting of the land of the dead, the harvesting of the land of the dead, or the missionary work in the land of the dead is probably the better translation. He took DNC 138 and the Gospel of Nicodemus and he just like put them next to each other and the parallels are crazy. The apocryphal books that talk about this in the Acts of Pilate or the Gospel of Nicodemus, yeah. uh, uh, the Divine Investiture of St. Michael, even the second book of Maccabees. God feeds the ravens as well. Why is it so hard for Christianity outside of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, aka Mormons, to understand that Christ would actually descend into hell, just like he hung out with harlots and publicans? I mean, this was revealed to us in 1918. Why was this lost? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I am your host, Cardinalis, and I'm joined in the studio today by Jonah Barnes, comedic editor at large and the associate professor of all things apoc apocryphal, who today is going to talk to us about something super interesting and um, relative to the discourse today and of this week. We're talking about the harrowing of hell and Doctrine and Covenants 138. Now, before you get glossy eyed and you just tune out, or you think, well, what's the heroine of hell? Like, is this just like a Halloween 2.0? No, it's actually a doctrine that early Christians recognized and celebrated, but was probably one of the greatest losses, would you say, of the great apostasy? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the LDS doctrine actually really kind of brings back in the restoration. And, and we want to highlight it here today. So Jonah Barnes, talk to us about the heroine of hell and what it has to do with Doctrine and Covenants, section 138, go. Okay, so it actually begins in section 93. So section 93 of the Doctrine and Covenants, if anybody here is particularly erudite in their knowledge of the Doctrine and Covenants, uh, section 93 says that if you are faithful, you'll receive the history, the full record of John. Now scholars have kind of, ruminated on that and wondering which John is this John the evangelist or is this John the Baptist and you heard it here in the book of Jonah Barnes that it is actually John the Baptist is the record that they're okay so I just looked this up right now on uh, churchofjesuschrist.org and section 93 truth is knowledge of things okay mm -hmm. and early in the section it says it recounts some of the um uh, 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 some of the, the John 1, 1, like the, the, the gospel of John chapter 1. Okay. And then it says, if you are faithful, it's this real cryptic verse. Okay. If you're faithful, you will receive the fullness of the record of John. Now, what in the world does that mean? Well, Jesus Christ said that there was none greater prophet than John the Baptist. I've always wondered about that verse. I've yeah, always wondered, cool. What yeah. the heck does that mean? Yeah. Like, Moses part of the Red Sea. Really? Yeah. Really? What did okay. John the Baptist do? Yeah. What did John the Baptist do? So here's what he did. I think I finally figured it out, and it, it gives me peace about that cryptic line. John the Baptist was the only prophet to see Christ in both mortality and the afterlife. That's what makes John unique, is that he bridged the veil. Oh, John was the yeah. only one. So John was the prophet who knew Jesus Christ was the Messiah. He saw God testify of it and the Holy Ghost descend, and then he crossed the veil before Christ and told everybody there that Jesus Christ was coming and prepared the way for him. He didn't prepare the way for him here in mortality. That wasn't it. Yeah. He prepared the way for him in the in spirit prison. So, if we're faithful, we'll receive the record of John. Guys, we did. We did. Section 138 is the fullness of the record of John. Wow. Okay. That's what it is. Okay. okay? So, cool. and here's, and the Apocrypha helps us understand why. So I put some cool things in the Discord, some super cool pictures. Okay, cool. I'm going to bust it out right now. So uh, which one of the super cool pictures? Are we talking about this guy right here? The oh, yeah. Either one of those are of great. Hell? So, Okay, cool. The harrowing of hell was a doctrine that was had by the early Christians okay. that they've now lost, right? Okay. And it is the idea that Christ, after he died, went down into spirit, the spirit world and freed the captives from death and hell from hell right he harrowed isn't hell. that Harrow spoken of in the the book of uh 
Jude or in Peter or something like that. Yes, yes. And in, in Peter, it's mentioned. Uh, and Isaiah is the free the captives. Uh, Peter says he for that reason, he went and preached to the spirits in hell. Uh, yeah. Paul talks about it. Yeah, it's is this another one of those verses where all the sola scriptura pastors that say that like they're all about the Bible and the completeness and the inerrancy of the Bible, and, like they don't even know that verse exists. They only know all the anti Mormon ones or what? Yes, it is, and it's and what what I love about this particular part of the apocrypha is that this part of the apocrypha existed and was accepted and was all over the early Christian church and predates sections of the Gospel of John, yet they don't include. This these books, they, they, you know, oh, we're all about, you know, being accurate. God, God breathed scripture. It's like, eh, yeah, well, and, and unless it contradicts your creeds and then you don't like it. Yeah. You know, and then you just <laughs> throw it out, you know, summarily. Yeah. But so there's several apocryphal books that talk about this. What what happened when Christ went into the spirit world? I believe these are the fullness of the record of John spoken of in Doctrine and Covenant section 93. Okay. John the Baptist was the guy who went down and gathered the prophets together and he had them rehearse their prophecies and he said, he's fulfilled these prophecies. Here comes Jesus Christ and he was the one to usher so, in. So what is the harrowing of hell exactly? Harrowing what? means to harvest. That's what the word harrowing means. It means to harvest. Oh. Okay. Now hell, just so people who know, hell isn't a thing. Actually, there is no hell. Okay. We don't believe in hell. Hell is the name of a German goddess of death, I think, is where we actually get the word hell. Gehenna, the Hebrew word for the land of the dead, yes, we believe in that, but there's no hell. That's not a thing. It's not in the Bible. It's extra biblical. There is no hell. That's from the creeds. Okay, so throw that out. So it's the harrowing of the land of the dead, the harvesting of the land of the dead, or the missionary work in the land of the dead is probably the better translation. Missionary work. And when you say we don't believe in a hell, you're not talking about the colloquial reference of the fact that the punishments of God are real. What you're saying is this fire and brimstone place that seems to be the modern iteration as exposed in the media and as represented in film and television that seems to loosely correspond with the whole Protestant notion of, you know, all of us sinners in the hands of an angry God. Yes. That that's that's really not yeah, no. the correct like Dante's Inferno is not what you know yeah, Jesus no. Christ was referring to. No, 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 no. Okay. Devils and pitchforks and fire and bird some no, 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 no. Okay, that's not cool. it. This is spirit this is the spirit world. Before nobody's been judged. Judgment hasn't happened yet. So nobody can go to hell. Yeah. Nobody can go to fire and brimstone yet. No, that's not a thing. It's spirit prison. Right. And it was only spirit prison until Christ came and made it spirit prison and spirit paradise because he freed the captives from hell. So um, the artwork uh, is pretty cool to see the second one that looks like the the Slavic icon. OK, cool. Rock on. So here's the original heroine of hell, which so shows Jesus Christ coming. And um, like you said, I guess gathering the prophets or. I don't yeah. And, oh, yes. Cardin. Yes. Who are those people that he's pulling out of there? Those are all the early patriarchs. So Adam and Eve and Abraham and oh, all these guys okay. who died before Christ. These are the early patriarchs. Oh, these are ones are the early patriarchs. OK. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, they look very pious. And look, there's two little devils right there on the side. They're like, mm -hmm. Wee, but we want them in here. Yeah, and remember, you know, remember okay. that those patriarchs are in there, right? So okay, and then this is the Slavic one, right? Yeah, and I love how if you look at the bottom there, see how the, that's the devil being crushed by the doors. Those are the two doors of hell. Christ has burst open the doors and they've oh, squashed and they, the and they devil. formed a cross. And he's dun, dun, dun. Yeah, and he's down there, oh, squirming in there, crushing, they're crushing the the devil. So I love this up. This artwork's all over. You can Google this. There's a million different versions, and it all looks super cool. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, so this looks like, uh, well, this looks like it could be, I don't know if it's the new modern Catholic art that's coming out from the really cool young artists that are taking all of the new digital stuff and uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, doing a fusion of old art styles and new, mm -hmm. but that totally does look like old, like. Like a Slavic icon. Yeah, Slavic icon art. Yeah, yeah that's pretty oh, rad. Uh, quick, quick story. I actually snuck yeah. some icons out of Russia for my mission. You're not supposed to do that. But I brought home Matthew because my dad's an accountant and he wanted the patron saint of accountants. So I brought back uh, an icon of Matthew. Matthew is the patron saint of accountants? Yeah, because he was the tax collector. Oh, Wow. I There's guess that does make account. sense. Right, so my dad was like, bring back an icon of Matthew. So I snuck it out. Now, they now, get super mad if they catch you. Like, Why are you not allowed to? It Was was it like an ancient icon? Like you snuck out a relic? or You know, 
Maybe we should move on. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. It's cool though. My dad my dad still has it. St. Matthew, patron saint. Oh, you rip yeah. some like stained glass window out of an ancient Hey, we're on enough FBI what? watch lists already. Yeah, Carmen, okay, okay, cool. You're right. You probably just got some fake stained glass thing from a merchant at a gas station <laughs> on your way out. I'm you know, on the bus. That was, bus stop. Yeah, somebody yeah, was. Yeah. Oh, man, please. So, so this doctrine totally existed in the early church. There's the Apostles' Creed, which is also in the Discord, and it oh, yeah. says Christ descended into hell. So yeah, this oh, is yeah. in the creeds. All yeah. you early Christians used to believe this thing, right? It was part of the doctrine. And then it just got rejected. Also in the Discord is a little blurb from Wikipedia. It's got a bunch of little references to- I, Oh, I'll look at the blurb, but yeah, here's the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. Yeah, holy smoke. You mm-hmm. don't get a word of this. From any of the new folks, yeah. Well, they you know, they what's they Mike re- Winger got to say about the they rethought hell, it all? You know, they rethought it all. They rethought it all. They said, uh, well, oh. we we burnt all those books that talk about it, so it so, doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, and it's <laughs> kind of uncomfortable, and so it's too granola. It's too like fleshy, too real for them because okay. they want everything's just a cloud. And Christ actually descending into hell and freeing the spirits, it means that people aren't judged immediately when they die. So they don't like that at all. They're like, ooh. Okay. So, so wow, this is this is so they just, man. Okay, they just cool, got rid of it. Going. Yeah. Anyway, so um a so a fan so so the apocryphal books that talk about this in the Acts of Pilate or the Gospel of Nicodemus, yeah. uh uh the Divine Investiture of Saint Michael, even the second book of Maccabees hints at this that really yeah that there is a spirit prison a spirit paradise and that christ went there so the well, gospel, what verses do you got verses oh uh, sure the gospel like, yeah i want to hear this the gospel of nicodemus is particularly um uh cool because the story goes is that there were two dudes who died and they were resurrected you know in the, in the bible it talks about uh, uh uh that many rose from their graves at the time that jesus christ was yeah uh, totally yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh-huh. that um two guys come back from the dead and they get interviewed about what happened. Yeah. Really? And they and in the and, Gospel of Nicodemus is yeah. what happens. Okay. And the Gospel of Nicodemus is the story. And they're like, well, here's what we saw. And they recount the story of we're down there and it's all dark. And then there's this light and Christ comes and frees everybody. It's a killer. It's a killer book. Well, this is awesome. I'm looking up the original papyri of the Gospel of Nicodemus. Yeah. And apparently it was also called the Acts of Pilate. Yeah, the Acts of Pilate. And it says it's an apocryphal gospel claimed to have been derived from original Hebrew work written by Nicodemus. Mm-hmm. Wow, this is intriguing. So what it okay. comes from actually is that's it. This is it's pretty we could do a whole podcast on this. Yeah. But the uh, uh originally it was the legal record of Christ's trial. So Christ goes to trial before Pilate and they bring these witnesses and they talk about it. And in the course of the trial, they find out all these things and Nicodemus writes it all down and makes the gospel of Nicodemus. And two of the guys they call as witnesses are these dudes who've been resurrected talking about what they saw in the spirit world. And so it's part of the, yeah. So to, to defend Jesus Christ, they're like, Hey, you know, these guys came back from the dead. And actually, as the story goes, Caiaphas and Ananias repent. They realize they have crucified the son of God. Yeah. In the gospel of Nicodemus, they go, what? He went to the land of the dead. These guys come back and they're like, yeah. And we were there and he really is the son of God. And he freed the spirits from prison. And Caiaphas is like, dude, I was totally wrong. And he repents. Not wild. Whoa. Not wild. Yeah, crazy. Okay, so I'm reading here that it says the dates are, and, and you know, Wikipedia never lies. We never lies. Um, it says the title Gospel of Nicodemus is medieval in origin. Okay, so fine, they might have changed the title. But anyway, the dates of its accreted sections are uncertain, but the work in its existing form is thought to date around the fourth or fifth century AD, which is still pretty early, man. Mm-hmm. Like some of our earliest manuscripts of. I think the Gospel of Mark are, are only in the early 300s. P- pieces of John, mistaken. pieces of John, we included that weren't. We have no record of it before the third century, for the fourth fourth century. Yeah. Wow. This okay. is. So, I mean, this is literally from a manuscript script perspective on par date wise with some of the New Testament with 
yeah, many straight up canonized books in the New Testament. It's not like some of these apocryphal works that come up in like the eighth century. <laughs> you know what I'm That's saying? That's funny. I'm right about like, to read from one of those. <laughs> oh, you are? Okay, cool. Yeah. So there, gonna say, uh, there's yeah. also the Armenian story of this whole thing. And guess what the Armenian story calls it? They don't call it gospel. They call it the history of John, just like section 93 said it would be. The Armenian record of the harrowing of hell is called the history of John because John's oh. the guy who shows up and I can even read some little bits from it here. If you okay. Me. Yeah, Not dude, let's in do Armenian. It. Yeah, let's check it out. Not, to all our Armenian listeners, hajoch, hajoch. Okay. But uh, he says, uh, he comes down and tells us there's one mightier than I. Um, and he says, uh, John said, I beseech you, tell me about him, what you prophesied about his coming into the world and about the destruction of hell or the manner of his coming. He's t he calls all the prophets and he says, everybody come together and rehearse these prophecies. Adam shows up. And rehearses it. He says, when I was in, in paradise, I beseech my Lord, grant me to enter paradise. And he said, I'll send somebody to save. And Moses says, this is here I, how I prophesied. David says, he shall come down like rain upon the grass. This is what I said. And all these prophets rehearse their prophecies. And they're all waiting when Jesus Christ comes. And they all recognize him because John has fulfilled all these prophecies to them. He's recited what Christ did in his life and, and all these things. That is the history of John, the Armenian, from the Armenian Apocrypha. So, so, to finally tie it together. Yeah. In 1918, right around the Day of the Dead, uh, 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 Joseph F. Smith gets a revelation, adds it to the Doctrine and Covenants, and he finds the fullness of the Gospel of John. It's the story of the harrowing of hell. It's the story, section 138, of Christ descending and freeing the spirits from spirit prison. And it's in our Doctrine and Covenants he restored it. Now, he did not have access to the Armenian history of John. He wasn't reading the Acts of Pilate or what or any of these apocryphal books. He received this in a vision. In a vision, he restored the fullness of the Gospel of John, prophesied in section 93, and it we now have it canonized in section 138. And what and what and if you put these documents next to each other, and there's a guy who did this, Brett McDonald. Okay. Who did this? He's my a buddy. He, he, he sounds like an engineer on the Boeing 747 in 1979. Wait, actually, does he work for Boeing? No. I don't know, but with a Maybe. name like Brett, no. <laughs> Brett McDonald, he sounds like he's filed for some mid-level patent on a very useful <laughs> on a very useful commercial jetliner somewhere. He, and he's got a pension from uh, you know, a a, a, a a some defense contractor somewhere. He probably and, has. You know, he makes those little ships inside of bottles on the weekend. That's that's what this guy sounds like. He, he probably has. You know? He's a super super smart dude uh, up in up in uh, Everett, Washington, who made a series LDS truth claims on YouTube. He I was gonna say, oh, good thing he's not some like drunk Irish bare knuckle boxer who's full of rage <laughs> about the fact that I just made fun of his name, and he's gonna come and like settle he's, that score. He's really know? into the apocrypha, and he's a drunken Irish boxer too. You know, so that's but he fine. took Keep going. he took DNC 138 and the Gospel of Nicodemus and he just like put them next to each other, and the parallels are crazy. They both start off with uh, everybody's in prison and they're sad. They gather all the prophets together. It lists the name of the prophets like they line up and they're all sad. And then Christ comes and they all start singing and the the words match up. I mean, this was revealed to us in 1918. The do you restoration, have that? Do you have that? I'll put yeah. it up on the screen. I do have it. I think I okay. uh, did. I put it in the. I think I put it in the Discord. I think it's the first thing I put in the Discord. It's called a, oh, document, a document without parallel. Without okay, parallel. Cool. So, Gordon B. Hinckley gave a talk saying Section 138 is a document without parallel, and Brett McDonald responds and says, "Well, actually," and then he he puts it parallel to the Gospel of Nicodemus, and it lines up. It's amazing. It's amazing how it lines up. Okay. But cool. nobody knew about this. So Gordon Hinckley didn't know. Nobody knew about this, right? Yeah. So Brett McDonald lines it up and says, actually, these line up quite well. If you scroll down uh, to where it starts, it has a, a table and it starts showing on the table the comparisons between, you know, uh, uh, section 138 it lists all these people, Adam and Eve and Abel and Noah and Shem and Isaac and Abraham. And, and then same thing in the Gospel of Nicodemus. Adam, Eve, our mother, and Micchaeus, and Seth, and John, and David, and Abraham, and Enoch, and it lines up these prophets, right? Okay, the scene cool. is exactly the same. It is a, it is a, and, and, and one reason I love this is that the restoration could not have ended with Brigham Young. It could not have ended before 1918 
We are still getting revelations today. And 1918, we got the coolest section of the Doctrine and Covenants. In uh -huh. 1918, we got it from Joseph F. Smith. Anyways, but this document is, I did not do this. this is Brett McDonald's work. It's fantastic. It's fantastic work that he that he published about this, a document without parallel, section 138. And well, he I'm going to check it out right here. I was finally able to get it on here on the screen. He doesn't even go into the Armenian history. And yeah, John. here we go. So here it is. A document without parallel, Joseph S. Smith's vision of the redemption of the dead. Uh, wow. And he just goes down here. You see this, this whole thing. I mean, this is. It's well done. It, uh, this looks literally better than half of the the textbooks that I read in college. Is this guy <laughs> writing textbooks? Yeah, there you are. Look, DNC 138 talks about, I saw the hosts of the dead, both small and great, and they were gathered together in one place, an innumerable company of the spirit of the just. And then Christ's descent in the gospel of Nicodemus says, then all the saints all running together to Father Adam were crowded into one place. Multitude of the saints, just my ones. Wow, this is he goes. It goes on and on and on. I mean, wow. the whole section. Okay. Has parallels in the Gospel of Nicodemus. And that's only one of the apocryphal books. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And he lines it all up and shows that we are receiving, just like Joseph Smith did with the book of Moses and the book of Abraham, we are receiving new books through the minds of visionary seers and revelators today. And they course and they're being proven true by apocryphal writings and it's super duper cool. So can you just buy this book on Amazon and it's already been translated or you yeah. just have to go, okay. Wow. Well, you, you can, you, it's, it's a open, open, it's free. You can just Google it and just read it and you read it and you go, this is the, this is DNC 138. Wow. It's just laid out for everybody to see. Okay, so, cool. Sick. Awesome. It's killer. Cool. So what else do we learn? Like, how does this change? Okay. So why did, why, why does Christianity not celebrate the heroine of hell and the fact that like Christ died for Barabbas, he died for the worst of us. Mm -hmm. God feeds the ravens as well. Why is it so hard for Christianity outside of the church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, AKA Mormons to understand that Christ would actually descend into hell, just like he hung out with harlots and publicans and the Sadducees kind of went tisk 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 for you associating with them. They're mm -hmm. harlots and publicans. Why would it surprise us that Christ descended even down into hell to see if he couldn't save people there or continue the work there? Like it, it obviously was so widespread that it made it into the Apostles Creed in yeah. the Apostles Creed was made in what, like 400 AD or something like that or three. Yeah. 330 or something. Yeah, it was like yeah. the fourth century. Okay. Yeah. So like yeah. why, why was this lost? Yeah. So it was, they paint themselves into a corner is what they do is it starts with the belief that who's the they, uh, when you say they paint us in the court, you're talking about like people that have the same kind of like a, a lot of the anti-Mormons that come after us and say that we've corrupted the doctrine and stuff like that. They're oftentimes Calvinists. They're oftentimes kind of, you know, yeah. hyper online YouTube evangelicals that hopefully are not demonstrative of the um, the entire faith uh, as a whole, that section of the body of Christ. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, to sum it up, you'd say we do notice there's there's certain camps that are a lot more fiery about this than others, yeah. right? Yeah. So. <laughs> well, to sum it up, you'd say certain, so when all Christianity woke up in the fourth century and they're like, oh snap, we're in the middle of the apostasy, what do we do? They get all these bishops together and they have to kind of like reconstruct what they can without revelation, essentially. Yeah. And so these okay. bishops all get together and they have these warring factions, Nestorius and Arius and Kirill and Athanasius, and they all fight over this thing and it's the most hair. It's Game of Thrones with the Bible, people. Anyways, but they um that'd be a good that'd be a good thumbnail. Game of Thrones of the Bible. Yeah, for but real. Anyways, what they did is they said Christ can't be mortal. He can't be human. He has to be separate because we are dirty and filthy and horrible, and he can't be a man. Because the question was, who is Christ? Is he divine or is he a man? Like he's kind of both, yeah. and they had to decide. And the camp that said. He's definitely a man. He's eating honeycomb. He's eating fish. He's, you know, got dirty feet. Like he's, he's not a like man. the bad captain in Pirates of the Caribbean that drank from the bottle of booze and it just went down through his rib cage. Yeah, right. right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, no, he's definitely a man. But the camp that said, no, he's a hundred percent divine because man is low they're platonic thinkers man is low and irredeemable and terrible and horrible and a totally different species and they won and so if you believe that man is this totally separate lowly horrible evil species and god is this untouchable what they're doing is they're separating god and man just like satan was wanted to do then you can't believe that 
God could descend into hell. That doesn't make really? any sense. So that was it, huh? Yeah, because you're like, well, hell's for horrible people like us. Like, why God couldn't do that. He's too perfect. Hmm. And they think their way. They do this line of assumptions, and they think their way miles and miles away from where the truth was. And so they rejected so the heart of So how does the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints kind of bring it back? Well, I mean, we what we should do is we get Easter all wrong. Okay, we get Good Friday. That's great. And then we get Saturday. And then we get Sunday. And it's like, wait, what happened in between? That Saturday is a hugely important day. That Saturday is why Sunday matters at all. That Saturday is because he went down and he preached the gospel to the dead to, to give these people a chance to accept the gospel. 99% of all God's human family was hopelessly damned. And he went down there and he opened up the gates so that they could hear the gospel in spirit prison. Okay. That happened on Saturday. We should talk about that. We should talk about that a lot. We have it. We're the only ones who have it. I mean, the Catholics kind of still have it, but like this is unique. We, we're the only ones with section 138. We're the only ones with the gospel of Nicodemus that this, we are prized to have this. So when Easter comes and Saturday, you like take the day, you know, is just like a throwaway day right before Sunday being the big resurrection day. Saturday should be huge. You should be doing ancestor work and, and genealogy and temple stuff. Like that Saturday is the day of uh, preaching the gospel to the, to the spirit prison. It's a huge day. Wow. Huge day. Read section 138. You should all read section 138 on the Saturday before, before Easter, before Easter Sunday. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Sick. You can also do, here's, here you go. Recipes. We're so, we are so cultured here. Here's a recipe. You take, uh, you take a little Pillsbury roll. You put a marshmallow inside and wrap it up and then you bake it. And the marshmallow, you tell the kids, look, this is Christ going into the tomb. Okay. And then you, you wrap it up and then you bake it and the marshmallow dis disappears. And then you open it. You have an empty tomb. Boom. Easter sure, recipes. Where, where's the marshmallow go? Because it just, it, it expands and melts and, and makes this sugary deliciousness on the inside of the roll and it vanishes. So you put it, you show them, go in and you bake it and then you say empty tomb, empty tomb rolls. Ah. Yeah. Here at Ward cool. Radio. Follow us for more recipes at Ward Radio. <laughs> that was funny. We that's do everything hilarious. here. We do everything here. All right, cool. Well, dude, th this is awesome. And I want to dig. I just love the sound, the harrowing of hell. It's such a great yeah. alliteration. Yeah. And I think we do have so much to learn from the early Christian church, especially if we're going to claim to be the restoration of that early Christian church. That's right. And when we talk about, you know, the vicarious baptisms for the dead that are mentioned in Second Corinthians or First Corinthians, uh -huh. sorry. And uh, you, you talk Peter. about our temple work and, and yes, exactly. The reference to our ancestors is mentioned in Peter and yeah. so on and so forth. We should really take this heroine of hell seriously. Besides, it just sounds like a movie that needs to have been made. The lost sequel to Dawn of the Dead that none of us saw that was the heroine of hell. The you know, yeah, hell. that would be a totally sick movie. Dude, you should play Doom 2 on the Saturday before Easter because it's about killing demons in hell it's about going into hell and like killing all the that's demons true. shotguns and laser that's blasters true. this is doctrine this is doctrine this is doctrine yes. video games are doctrine doom to church of jesus christ of latter-day you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> doom two on the saturday before easter it's tradition now all right awesome well hey let's keep the conversation go going guys please if you want to see more make sure you check us out on our website at wardradio.com and other than that it's been real and it's been fun it's been real fun so we will see you guys in the next program right.